Hi guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com and welcome to live lesson episode number... So I wanted to let you guys know that every second Monday of the month at 7 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be live streaming a lesson over at rockclass101.com. Now these live lessons are going to be hosted by Matt Dahlberg, and each month the topic will be different. So what's fun about the live lessons is that you're not only able to watch live, but you're also able to chat live. So you'll be able to chat with Matt and other Rock Class 101 members. So for more information on how to tune in, click this link right here or go to the site rockclass101.com and do a search for live lessons. Now on that page, you'll also be able to watch every live lesson that we've done before. So if you've ever missed one, no worries, they're all there. Now, if you can't make the live stream, don't sweat it, because the day after the broadcast, we'll be publishing it to our YouTube channel. And to go one step further, on the first Monday of the month, which is one week before the broadcast, we're going to have a forum post up on the site, which will cover two things. Number one, what the topic for the month's live lesson will be about. And number two, you'll be able to post your questions ahead of time. So that's great news because you're still going to be able to participate. Now to post on our forum, all you have to do is sign up for basic membership, which is 100% free, and that will gain you the ability to post on our forums. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Matt to teach this month's lesson, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Today we're going to be working on the tremolo technique, and specifically we're going to be working on what's called a th thumb tremolo. And this is a really unique technique to the ukulele. You'll see the best players in the world use this to create a really fast, rapid sound. Players like Jake Shimabukuro and Taimani Gardner and Aldrin Guerrero, they all use this same technique, and it's, it's fun. The thing, though, is it's a really tricky technique, and it requires a ton of practice and it requires some thumbnail. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about that, um, but you can get away with doing the tremolo technique with something like a thumb pick, and I'll talk more about that too as we go through it. But let's go ahead and start with the technique. I'm going to actually start by just demoing it just a little bit um, so that you can hear it. I'm just going to use it on my A string. I'm going to play a little bit of the Malaguena exercise from the PDF download for today's lesson. Uh, it sounds and looks something like this. Pretty cool, right? Well, the way that this technique is done is you're going to use your thumb, and specifically you're going to use the nail of your thumb. You can see that I've got a little bit of nail coming over there. It's not a lot, but it's just enough so that I can play with the nail on the down strum and the up strum. If your thumbnail does not come over the top of your finger like this, it's going to be very, very difficult to do this technique. So that's the first step, is making sure you have a nail that's coming over the top of your finger. Just a little bit though, you don't need a lot. It's a little bit easier the more nail you have, um, but you don't need a ton for it to be able to work. Now what you're going to do first is learn the placement. So what I like to do is I like to take my middle and my ring fingers on my playing hand, and I like to set them in this sort of area on the ukulele. So sort of on the front half of the sound hole, sort of near the fretboard where it meets the body, I'm going to place those two fingers to make contact about halfway down from this point. So it looks something like this. Now my hand is a different shape than yours might be. So in the event that you're working on this and you find that you need to move it a little bit more down or up, that's okay. Uh, you know, everyone's hand is a little bit different. But we remain these fingers really, really straight. You notice I'm not bending at all. I'm gonna keep it as straight as I can. And then I'm going to bring my thumb down and I'm going to keep this part of my thumb completely straight. And when I say straight, I don't necessarily mean like this. I mean you're more extending the thumb and bringing it down this way. So what you'll see as I do this is that I have my thumb and my fingers in this sort of position so that my A string is going to be plucked with that thumb and with that nail. And it's going to be about a 45 degree angle with those fingers then coming over. Now, as soon as I put the fingers there, you can't see what the thumb looks like. But if I take the, th the thumb away, or excuse me, the fingers away, you can see just the thumb there in position. Now, this feel right now will have the wrist sort of cocked outward, and that's okay. That's what happens with this technique. Now, the thing to practice first is to just work 
on getting a good tone on your down and your up with the thumb. This takes a long time. It took me a few months just to get a good tone with this. It's a technique that really rewards good patience because the first step here is getting that downward pluck. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to move my thumb here. I'm going to instead have the pressure on these two fingertips. I'm going to pivot my wrist down. And what I'm physically doing here is I'm moving my forearm along this pivot down. So it looks like this. So all that I'm doing right now is making the downstroke, but what you can see is I'm not using the thumb to make the movement. The thumb is striking the string, but it's pivoting on that little axis of this. So that's the first step to the technique. The second step and the hardest step of the whole thing is coming back up. When you come with an up pluck on the thumb, you want to try and get a good tone in the same way that you did down. Now what you'll find is the first time you do this, you get this sort of weird, like, cl clicky, non-existent tone. And the reason for that is because when your nail hits the string, if the pad touches the string at all after the nail has struck it, it will mute it and make a thud sound. So you have to make sure that the nail has a clean break to the string. So what this means is I actually like to, with this up, I like to go at an angle with the thumb. You'll see that instead of being, you know, straight to the string like this, I'll actually angle the thumb so that it's more of a deep angle of the nail to the string, rather more of a shallow angle, right? You can see that that fingernail, instead of being perpendicular like this, that won't create a good sound. I'm instead going to be deeper with it and come up and in. You'll notice that the thumb is going inward. And you'll also notice the thumb itself is not moving, right? I am just pivoting that wrist up. So it's down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. This right here, honestly, is the hardest part of the technique. It's just getting a good tone on those up strums. Now what happens is you notice that it's a pivot. These two fingers are applying force into the ukulele. The thumb is staying straight. You're extending it fully. And then you're rotating on this sort of pivot point of the arm on the ukulele and the uh, fingers on the side. And it's going back and forth like this to create that technique. And the trick is to gradually increase the speed while still maintaining a good sound and consistency. And as you do this more and more and more, you start to get the tremolo technique. Now, building up speed is really tricky for this, and it's mainly because it's almost like a twitch. It's not, it's not as controlled when you do it full speed, which is what makes it difficult. My favorite analogy for this is kind of a bizarre one, but if you're my age or you enjoy video games, you may have remembered you know, video games in the past where you had to like push a button as fast as you can. Games that come to mind are Mario Party. And I remember with those, I would try to you know, like push with my thumb or my finger and I'd be really slow with them. I never was very good. And the reason was, I discovered, was because I didn't know how to do this type of motion. What's happening is as I'm moving across this and doing it faster and faster, my hand is trying to start to vibrate really quickly. And it's the same sort of thing if you're pushing a button really fast. Instead of trying to do something like this to push it, it's sort of a twitch that starts to happen. Much like if you're doing a roll on the ukulele and trying to go really fast, it becomes this twitching motion of the arm. And that twitching motion is what allows you to build speed, but it also makes it very hard to control. And that's what makes this technique so difficult, is you start to build up speed, but then it all kind of falls apart because it doesn't have any consistency to the tone and to the control. So then you slow down to get that, but then you lose the speed. And so you have to find that sort of perfect relationship going back and forth. It's really important just to get comfortable with that down and up, getting a good tone, and then you try to introduce that twitch a little bit to it, that vibration of this contact, this contact with the forearm being engaged to go very quick. And so it's sort of funny, I mentioned the video game example because 
Now, when I play those games, I can do it really fast. I can push that button super fast because I just pretend that I'm tremoloing on, you know, a controller instead. And so it's the same type of feel. It's very hard to explain, but I think you can see it in what I'm playing. You see that my arm gets very tense. The fingers get very tense. The Everything is tense about this technique. It's not a relaxed technique. And that's what gives you that sort of speed. And when you watch players like Aldrin and Taimani and Jake, they look more relaxed than not, but they're still more tense than they are when they do other techniques. And that's an important thing to know is that even though they look relaxed, it's still more tense than other things that they do just because of the style of the technique. Now, some players like Al Dream will only brace with the middle finger here. Um, and so what, what he does for the angle, instead of having those two fingers, he has just the middle and he has a, a little bit more shallow of an angle. And it's kind of funny because his index finger kind of sticks up like this. It does it like that. And a lot of people think that he's doing the tremolo technique by the index finger hitting the A string, but really it's the thumb. It's the same sort of technique, just a different position. And so the reason I'm bringing that up is because A, Aldrin's like one of the best players in the world at doing this technique, so check out his stuff if you haven't. But B, it's it, everyone does it a little bit differently. So it's okay if you find that a, a steeper angle or a more shallow angle or whatever helps you because everyone's hands are sort of different. But once you can build up a little bit of speed doing this, and when I say a little bit of speed, I mean, you know, do sort of this. It's not very fast yet, but it's very consistent. You'll start to find that you might catch and hang up, and that's this sound right here. And the reason for that is you're digging in too deep with the nail. To do this technique really proficiently, you'll notice that you barely, barely, barely have to hit the string. If you're digging in too deep, you're going to get caught and get bad sounds out of it. So it's very light. And you want the feel of the finger to the string to be very light, meaning you're making very minimal contact with it. And you're not doing it very hard. So the twitch that I'm talking about for comfort, we oftentimes think power with it. But really, to do this technique well, we want to be very graceful with how the finger strikes the string, meaning we want to be very soft with that thumbnail striking the string on both the down and the up. It's better to do it to do it soft and fast than it is to do hard and fast because you'll get more consistency. So once you have that, which again, it took me a couple months to get, I, a lot of these tips I think will help expedite it greatly for you guys as you're working on it, but it's it's a hard technique, it takes some practice, but once you get it to that sort of point, what I really like to do is just start fretting notes. And this is why the Malaguena song that we worked on, um, or rather the PDF song uh, exercise for this works so well is because all that we're going to do is go up the fretboard as we're going. We're going to start here by just starting to roll. We're not going to worry about how much, we're just going to get that consistent. And then we're going to take our fretting hand and we're going to place the index finger on fret four. And what you'll notice is as soon as you place it on fret four, it can feel a little bit different to the thumb striking the string because the pressure, the tension is now different on the string. And then we go to seven, which again, will have a little bit different of tension. And then back to zero, and then five, four, excuse me, and then seven. And that's just the first two measures of the PDF and that's okay to work on. over and over, holding it for different kind of amounts of time. And then you can move on to the next section here. And you can see that all I'm doing is holding that tremolo at the same sort of speed. So it looks something like this when you play it nice and slow with that. Now when you do it at that speed, let's be real, it's kind of boring. It's not that sound that we want, right? And so that's the trick is start speeding it up. Start getting it closer to that sort of sound. And 
and then you can start to build up some speed. Super fun, right? It's one of my favorite techniques. Now, word of warning, if you look at my arm here, yeah, it's just a little bit, you know, that, that sort of mark. When I do this technique for a while, I start bruising here on the forearm. In fact, you know, different ukuleles, some of them have arm bevels. In fact, Panalea makes arm bevels. I gotta get one with an arm bevel. That can help relieve some of the tension. Also, my fingers will get sore when I do this technique for long periods of time. It's very normal. It's not a natural technique. It takes a lot of this sort of twitching motion and, and weird pressures. And so when you're working on it, focus on developing it and making sure you're getting comfortable and do short, quick, frequent sessions, right? So what that means is make sure that your sessions are nice and brief and frequent. And if you ever start to hurt, stop. Don't, don't, don't worry, don't risk it. It's not worth the, the risk of, of damaging something in the hand. Now the index and pinky fingers here can kind of do whatever. Some people feel more comfortable keeping them really straight. Some people just kind of, you know, let them hang out. Doesn't really matter. Both those fingers are irrelevant to this sort of technique. But there's the tremolo technique. If we look at other examples here, we can actually see on that sheet, um, we had another example, the second one, which is an A minor pentatonic, just a different sound if you're getting sick of the Malaguena tune, which by the way, if you'd like to learn a full arrangement of Malaguena, and you're watching this on a replay, it is linked down in the description below. But when you're working on the A minor pentatonic scale there, it's just another, exercise going all the way up to 12. And, and that's fantastic because 12 feels very different than open. The tension is quite different, right? So that ex example, example B sounds something like this done nice and slow with it. Right, pretty cool. But then the third example here, Part C, uh, example of Miserlou. So this is, I don't recommend trying until you get comfortable with the technique, but we really wanna include it in the example here because it's, I think, and and you know, I think everyone thinks, it's the best representation of this technique. And so Miserlou, um, a song uh, that's sort of an old surf classic, with this technique sounds something like this. So here's C and it goes something like, Really cool sound, right? It's a really cool one. And I think we'll be doing this on uh, here on Rock Class 101 pretty soon as a, as a ukulele duet. So if that's a tutorial you'd like to see, leave a comment down below um, because I think that uh, it'd be a fun one to work on. So that is the tremolo technique with the thumbnail. Now I mentioned at the start of the lesson, you actually can do this without, the, without a nail using a pick. And so I'm not very good at this. A lot of other players are much better at it, um, especially if they're used to breaking their, their nail. And so what you wanna get for the, the thumb pick is one of these type of picks. So this is just a Dunlop over thumb pick. It's a medium, I really should have had gotten a large, it's a little tight on there. But what happens with this pick is it attaches to the thumb like this. And the, the problem is now you're, you're at a different angle, right? When we're doing the tremolo, we are at like a 45 degree angle. Now we have to be perpendicular or rather parallel to the string um, to get the pick perpendicular to the string. So that looks something like this. Now, otherwise it's exactly the same. I'm gonna still put these fingers down. Then my index finger, I'm actually going to take and I'm going to reinforce this. So it looks something like this. And then I'm going to try the same sort of motion. Now you hear I'm catching on, I'm getting a lot of click sounds because as I just mentioned, I'm not very good with a, with a uh, pick here. But what's really important with it is to be very light and loose with the, how the pick connects with the string. If you dig in too much, if you use too much of the pick, everything's going to catch and you'll never build up speed. So if you're just using the very tip of the pick and you're very light with the motion, eventually you can get that same sort of feel. And so if I try to do it here, Kind of losing it again. I'm not very good with the thumb, just be or with the uh, pick, because I never really use it. And you can hear how that works. I actually find that, despite it being harder for me and one that I don't use very much, it can be a little bit more accurate um, using a pick. The downside is when you use a pick, you can't do all the thumb-based strum stuff as easily. 
as you would without it. So, but it is possible to use with the pick. Again, the only difference there is that your index finger will actually help reinforce the pick as you're going over. Same sort of motion, same sort of twitch feel. Just use more of the tip of the pick to make it work. And sound something like that. Now, both of these tremolo techniques can be used over multiple strings. We're starting with the A string because it's usually our melody string, the one that sounds best, but we really can do it on other strings too. It's also much harder though, because with the A string, we have the, the luxury of when we go down, there's nothing else we can play, right? When we come up, we kind of hit our E string oftentimes as we come up in that motion. But when we go down, there's nothing in the way. So if I go to the E string and do it, the difficulty is making sure that I'm not going into the A string too and the C string, and the G is really hard because you're so far up that you're having to kind of make the angle real awkward. Luckily, if you're playing a high G, you never really use it on the high G. On low G though, if you want, really want to get that, uh, um, you know, that miserly sound, you actually might want to try it on the low G. And we might try that later, but I digress. So you can do it on other strings, it just takes some adjustment, and I would recommend only working on the A string until you start getting some comfort with it and then move on to the other strings to, to work on it that way. But there you have it. That is the tremolo technique, one of my all-time favorites on the ukulele. It's very difficult, but it is really worth it if you're looking for that sort of sound. I'm gonna go ahead and look into the comments now to see if there are any questions. If you're watching this live, feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, if you're watching this recording, feel free to ask a question down in the comments below. I'll try and check out the video after it's posted as well. So it uh, looks like chat is working, which is great. So hello, Connie and Zill and Lindell and uh, uh, Lisa, everybody else, this is awesome. Um, uh, Lindell says, if you're my age, it's pinball machines. It's probably the same type of thing at times if you're really trying to push the, the button quick. Um, and so uh, a longer nail may be a good investment. So yeah, a longer nail helps immensely. Make sure that if you're growing your nail out, you're filing it often and not just filing it, but also buffing, buffing it. I've got these all over my house. These are, you know, a buff uh, thing. This is made by a company called Oasis. Um, I use this pretty much every day before I play um, uh, to polish my nail because if you were to strike your string with your nail, well, imagine the file that you use. If your file's really coarse, imagine using that file as a guitar pick or pick on the uke. It might sound really bad. Well, your nail's gonna sound like whatever the, the roughness of the file you use to file it down will, right? And so with these, they get really, really smooth and my nail gets as smooth as this sort of uh, area on it. And you can see that almost shimmers and that helps make a much better consistent sound, so. Um, so it says, I have a longer nail on my uh, left but can't do it lefty either. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's really important to get that longer nail to get this sort of sound. Um, Lindell says, I find it easier bracing with just one finger. That's great, that sort of Aldrin method, so to speak. You know, everyone's a little bit different. As long as you're bracing and getting that sort of pivot on this axis with the thumb remaining more straight, you're going to have a good time with it. Um, Zillow says, you're so good at showing us what not to do and always matches what I'm doing. Uh, I've taught a lot of private lessons, a lot of, lot of online private lessons. So I'm very used to, as I'm talking about this stuff, seeing the person do it and then changing what I say to reflect, you know, what changes they need. So when I do these live lessons, I just sort of imagine everyone doing it completely wrong and hopefully one of those elements will, will help somebody learn it a little bit easier. So Zill says, you're always using the A string, ever do it on the other string? So I talked about that uh, just a moment ago. Um, we do do it on the other strings. It's just less common. The A string is more of a melodic string overall. Um, we still do use it on the other strings. I would say the E string's the next important because sometimes you'll go from the E string to, or the A string to the E string to create that sort of sense. Um, but it is more difficult. So uh, Lindell says, I find it easier to pretend I have a pick and use the nail of my pointer finger. Is that legit? Yeah, so so um, the reason I didn't mention this is most people have a longer thumbnail than pointer finger nail, um, just because a pointer finger nail is more likely to wear down. But if you look at how I was just using this pick like this, right? Well, what if I remove the pick and I just use my index finger? as that sort of nail. And, and yeah, that's absolutely what I can do. In fact, I believe Chris Fuchigami does it this way um, to create this sort of technique. Um, now in that of, in this uh, in the event of this, I would recommend using the ring finger more for the tremolo. Um, I think it's really difficult to get the angle. So just having the ring can kind of open up the hand enough. 
Um, I've not really tried this before, but uh, yeah. So that's more like the, the Chris Fuchigami type of sound. And you can absolutely do that same feel though, even though now you're using the ring finger more, um, it's, it's the same sort of twitching motion. So that's absolutely an option. I think this is a little bit better sounding, but this is more flexible if you can't do the thumb because it frees your hand for all the cool, you know, 10 finger stuff and all that. So um, Zill says, how many BPM are we shooting for? So this is a great question because you, you're not, I, I know that sounds funny, but this technique is not as much about the consistency as first, uh, at first, as much as it is developing the tone and starting to get as fast as you can. The BPM is going to matter more once you have the technique established and you're starting to practice to do things like accents, which is where you're playing a note louder. Miserloo is going to do that because it's that da 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 da. Uh, it's this sort of. You can hear these, some are louder. Right? And the special. And those accents are where we end up wanting to put on a metronome and things. So when you're first practicing, don't worry about practicing with a metronome. Just try to get comfortable with this and doing this as fast as you can. Because by the time you're doing this, then you're ready to start trying some, some different stuff. So um, Mary says, oh, I had to refresh, so I'm not getting the chat. I left a question in the forum. Excellent. I'm going to go check the forum. Um, Mary says, I have a little nail on my thumb, but I'm getting more of a harmonic type sound on the upstroke. Yeah. So, so that's something that I was trying to mention at the beginning. The way to get that harmonic motion or harmonic sound to go away is to not come so perpendicular to the string like this. Come more at an angle and go inward with your strike. So you can see I'm actually going into the E string. So I'm coming up and in as I make that motion. That can really help make sure I'm not creating that harmonic type of sound. That harmonic sound you're mentioning is created mostly by the nail coming off and then the pad of the finger actually touching the string immediately after the nail strikes it, which actually creates a harmonic effect in the same sort of way that my thumbnail striking the string and my finger touching it to do an actual harmonic does. So coming up at that harder angle can really help. So um, Lindell says, I was once told they need to be actual 16th notes or 32nd notes. Yes, you are correct. Um, and, uh, and so it's just difficult to practice it as this sort of one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one. E and a one e and a it's difficult to do that when you're first learning the technique. You want to focus on tone and 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 consistency of that tone. You know, make sure that you're getting a really even sound, and then you absolutely can put it on. You can try to do you know so many per beat. So if you try to do four per beat, so if you have you know click, 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 click. You can start to practice with the metronome in that way. Um, but honestly, with this technique, once you develop that sort of feel and, and sound, it becomes less important to, um, you know, to practice with the metronome because you just start to, start to get it when, that, when you're getting up to those speeds. But you absolutely can practice it with a metronome, put it on you know, four times per click, maybe two times per click, eight times per click, just whatever helps you internalize it to keep the consistency. But the thing to develop is that that speed. So I'm gonna check the forum right now um, because I know the chat was down, see if there's any other uh, posts in there. Um, it looks like a couple people said, I can see hear you in the video, but the chat feature is not visible. I'm glad it is now. Um, I see the post about the harmonic top sound on the upstream. So I hope that helped in terms of talking about that that angle, um, you know, of, of being steeper in it. And so that's going to, uh, that's going to create that sort of sound. Um, Lindell says, I'd like to ask a question about the current arrangement we're learning on Malaguena using two fingers for tremolos. I'm having uh, trouble bringing out the melody on the bass note. So unfortunately, I don't know the Malaguena arrangement on rock class. Um, I did do Malaguena for a live lesson, which is this sort of one. That sort of sort of sound. Um, so check that out. That'll be linked down below as well. Um, but unfortunately, I don't know the arrangement. I think Evan did it. Um, if Evan did it, then of course I don't know it because Evan's a, he's so good. How is he so good? 
anyways, I, digra I digress. Um, and so um, if you're talking about the arrangement here uh, that, that I did as a live lesson, um, what you want to do to make sure that you're getting uh, more sound out of the notes with the thumb is try to back off the volume with the fingers that are too loud. A lot of times we think that dynamic differences are we need to play X louder, but really oftentimes it's we need to play Y softer and, and that will allow you to start bearing out more volume. So if you're doing something like this and, and you're wondering how you should, uh, you know, create that sound. you'll see that what I'm going to try and do is make those softer and that can allow the thumb to kind of come out. If you're struggling the other way, if this is too loud, then what you try and do is soften that up, make the other parts louder. It sounds sort of common sense, right? You know, when you're working on dynamics, but just having that mindset can help a lot of making the thing softer that's too loud instead of making the thing louder that's too soft. Um, also, slow down. That's so important. Whenever we develop a skill and we play it over and over and we build up too much speed, we develop the muscle memory and that's very difficult to undo that muscle memory. The best way to undo muscle memory is slow down, go, go backwards, because then that'll allow you to be able to introduce more technique at a slower speed. You can think about it a little bit more instead of just letting the muscle memory sort of take over. So let me see if there are any other uh, questions in the forums. Um, and uh, I'm gonna see if there are any more questions here on YouTube as well. Uh, doesn't look like there is. Um, so this has been the tremolo technique, one of my favorites on the ukulele, one of the hardest on the ukulele. Give yourself some patience as you're learning it. Um, know that it took me a long time to get this one down. Um, and it's just because it's so freaking hard. So if you're working on it and struggling with it, it's okay. It's uh, all part of the journey. But when you get it down, it's really cool to create that type of, you know, surf rock sound. So thank you guys so much for attending today. I hope you guys are all having a safe and, uh, and fun isolation, uh, safe and healthy. Um, it's been an interesting time. I've been very fortunate to be teaching online ukulele lessons for the last decade or so. So my work days feel pretty much the same, but I hope that the ukulele and maybe some of these videos can help, you know, bring some joy into your lives during this crazy time. I look forward to seeing you guys next month for the next live lesson, as well as the next uh, song lesson we do here on Rock Class 101. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you later. See ya.